And a node, more specifically, is any value of either r, the radius, or the two angles for which the wave function, and that also means the wave function squared, or the probability density, is going to be equal to zero. So we can see in our 1s orbital, how many nodes do we have? There's no nodes. Yeah, it looks like we hit zero, but we actually don't. Remember that we never go all the way to zero, so there's these little points if we were to look really carefully at an accurate uh, probability density plot, the, it would never actually hit zero. Uh, and then, for example, how many nodes do we have in the 3s orbital? Two, that's correct. So we have two nodes in the 3s orbital. We can actually specify uh, where those nodes are, which is written on your notes. Uh, for the 2s orbital, at, at 2 a naught, so it's just two times that constant a naught, uh, which is the Bohr radius. And for the 3s, we have one at 1.9 a naught and one at 7.1 a naught. We can also specify what kind of node we're talking about. We'll introduce in the next course uh, angular nodes, but today we're just going to be talking about radial nodes. And a radial node is a value for r at which psi, and therefore also the probability psi squared, is going to be equal to zero. So when we're talking about an s orbital, since there is no angular dependence and it only depends on r, every single one of our nodes is actually going to specifically be a radial node, right? Because these are, for example, this 2a naught is a value of r, a value of the radius, no matter which way you go around at which the, there's going to be a node at which there is zero probability density of finding an electron there. So it's very easy to calculate, however, the number of radial nodes. And this works not just for s orbitals, but also for p orbitals or d orbitals or whatever kind of orbitals you want to discuss. Um, and that's just to take the principal quantum number and subtract it by 1, and then also subtract from that your uh, l quantum number. So what you can do for 1s is just take 1 minus 1, and then l is equal to 0. So you have 0 radial nodes. And that matches up with what we saw. Uh, if we try this for the 2s, we have 2 minus 1 minus 0. So what we should expect to see is one radial node. And that is what we see here in the probability density plot. And then if we think about the 3s, we want to start with 3. We subtract 1. Again, L is equal to 0, so minus 0. And we have two radial nodes. Uh, so this should be pretty straightforward. Let's see if we can get uh, close to 100% on this one, which is how many radial nodes does a 4p orbital have? Let's give 10 seconds on that, make you think fast here. Okay, so most people were correct, or, well, the, the majority, <laughs> at least, were correct. I'm seeing that it's a 4p, has two nodes. Let's just write this out, since not everyone did get it correct. So if we're talking about a 4p orbital, and our equation is n minus 1 minus l, the principal quantum number is 4, 1 is 1. What is l for a p orbital? 1. So, I tricked you a little, I guess. I didn't put an S up there, and that's what we've been talking about, so that was probably the issue. But what we find is that we have two radial nodes. All right, so we can switch back to our notes here. So doing those probability density dot graphs, we can get an idea of the shape of those S orbitals. We know that they're spherically symmetrical. 